Are you a problem DM? This week, we take a look at five dungeon masters nobody wants at their table and help you avoid becoming one of them. Hello players and GMs, I am Reese, and welcome to another video by Jetpack7. Before we get started today, I wanted to draw your attention to an incredible Kickstarter happening right now. Layer is running a campaign for printable minis for our legendary dragons from our previous book, Legendary Dragons, and it looks awesome. All of the files look ridiculously accurate from what I can tell, and I personally can't wait to get my hands on some of those for my campaign, so I will be sure to put the link to the Kickstarter in the description below. Feel free to help them out any way you can. And, as always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I love talking with everyone in the comment sections, and every single like helps our videos get out there, so thank you all so much for every single interaction so far. Now, a while ago, I did a video about the five types of players with whom I dislike playing, so I decided that this week I will do the same thing, but with Dungeon Masters instead. Now, theoretically, this could apply to really any game master for any RPG, but being that the vast majority of my experience is with D&D, I figured I should really just talk about that. It sounds pretty obvious, but the Dungeon Master is such an important piece of the D&D puzzle. Many times, they're the ones crafting the world in which you're playing, the characters you get to meet, the adventures you get to... adventure. So, obviously, they have a lot of pull. But from my experience, a bad DM can be much worse than a good DM can be good. What do I mean by that? <laughs> Not really sure. I guess what I mean is that a good DM can give you an awesome role-playing experience with your friends. You can form memories, write stories you'll talk about for years to come, and overall just have a great time. But a bad DM can, in the very worst cases, cause some tension between friends, or even worse, just ruin a friendship entirely. You carry a lot of responsibility as the DM, because in the end, you're the one deciding what happens to the players. And it is your job to make sure that even if bad things are happening, the players are still having fun. So let's just go ahead and jump into the list with a classic DM we've probably all experienced in one capacity or another, the Conductor. For clarification, I'm talking about a train conductor, not like the conductor of an orchestra. This is the type of DM who has a narrative in mind, and no matter what happens, the train will keep on rolling in that same direction. Some people might call this railroading, but I'm hesitant to use that term. Railroading has become such a common term that it's almost lost its true meaning. Following a linear story, which will always end with the same boss fight, with many of the same checkpoints along the way, is not true railroading. That's just called a linear plotline, which some groups really enjoy. The first campaign I ever ran was unintentionally rather linear. My players were introduced to pressing matter after pressing matter, and ended up pursuing those things I set before them pretty much without exception, but none of them ever felt like I was limiting their choice. That is what separates the railroading from just a linear plot. The conductor lives on the railroad. Anytime their players want to find an alternative route to a solution, something that might throw a wrench in their set plan, the conductor finds a way to stifle that option. Even if it requires them to make something up on the spot, the conductor will find a way to say no to their players' creative solutions to their already set-in-stone plot devices. So, how can we avoid becoming the conductor? Let me first say, I understand where they're coming from. It is difficult as a GM to have your players managing to find loopholes in your plans at every turn. But take my word, it will almost always happen. And that is not a bad thing. It's okay to make it hard for your players. But if you find yourself making stuff up to force them down a particular path, then try to take a step back and remember that you're running this game for them. The world you created is for them to play in, and the players are the only living pieces in that otherwise pretty much non-living world. They will always think of something you didn't, and in my experience, that creates some of the single most memorable moments in any campaign. The next DM I try to avoid is the polar opposite of the conductor, which I call the tired parent. I could have probably come up with a better name for this one, but the imagery just fits too well. The tired parent puts a bunch of toys in a room, ushers their kids into the room, and just says, okay, go play, and then they leave. This DM is essentially running a sandbox campaign, but without the actual good parts of a sandbox campaign. They'll bring you to a vague, uninteresting place with very few plot points to pursue, and set you on your way. As a player, that tends to result in some frustration. While yes, freedom of choice can be very valuable as a player, too much freedom usually means the players have no idea what to do or where to go, and they'll usually end up wasting a bunch of time. When players get frustrated, they can start arguing amongst themselves or grow disinterested in the campaign and become destructive. It just isn't good for anybody. The biggest sign that you haven't given your players enough to go on is to simply ask, what do you want to do? 
And if you're met with blank stares and quiet shrugging, you probably need to give your players more stuff to actively pursue. There are a million tropes you can use to introduce a plot point to your players, and they're all tropes for a reason. They work. A stranger drops a mysterious note at their doorstep. Thirteen dwarves storm into their home and begin causing havoc, speaking some nonsense about wanting a party to steal a dwarven relic from the lair of a dragon. The party comes across a magical ring in a cave, and a cave goblin tries desperately to get it back by challenging them to a riddle game. You know, super vague tropes like that. It can still be a sandbox-style campaign while the characters pursue a particular narrative. In fact, that makes for the best sandbox-style campaign, in my opinion. The next kind of DM is one we commonly joke about, but I think we actually rarely encounter. I call this one the Nero. Okay guys, look, I know the names are terrible, but I need you to bear with me. We're going a little historical with this video, but that's just the way it is. This DM is in charge of leading his group, but is instead way too excited about killing them instead. We always hear about DMs joking about killing their party and putting them in an encounter so difficult that there's absolutely no way the party will find a way out. Nero isn't joking. This DM meticulously crafts encounters to make sure that the party will not only be challenged, but will almost definitely lose. And I'm not even talking about the classical Gygaxian D&D with save or die traps or overtuned encounters. I'm talking about a DM whose goal it is to kill the party. Now, let me just say, if your party wants to play this kind of game, obviously, that's fine. However, even parties looking for a challenging game aren't generally looking for this sort of thing. There is a fine line between creating a challenging encounter for your players and playing against your players. There is no worse feeling as a player than feeling like your DM is playing against you, intentionally trying to stifle your character's ability. If you find yourself doing this, I encourage you to put yourself in your player's shoes and imagine playing in the game where your DM wants you to fail. It just flat out isn't fun. If you're the type of DM who wants to challenge your players, I highly encourage you to take a look into Tomb of Annihilation, namely the tomb itself. You can find that either at the end of the module, Tomb of Annihilation, or in the Tomb of Horrors, which is in Tales of the Awning Portal. That thing is a living, breathing death trap, and it will kill some of your PCs. But it also has compelling encounters, puzzles, traps, and goals for your players to pursue, and plenty of ways to avoid dying. It may actually help you to have a pre-built set of encounters to keep you from adding additional ways to murder your party, and hopefully make them feel like they're facing an extreme challenge without feeling as if their DM is their enemy. I call the next bad DM the star. This is the DM who likes to make it their own show, and in many cases ends up actually putting their own character in with the party. This DM loves evil villain monologues, unnecessarily long description boxes, and playing their NPCs in a way that outshines the party itself. There isn't too much to say about this one other than that. The entire reason we play D&D is to be the primary part of a story we craft. The star takes that away from the players because they make the campaign about the story and the work the DM has done, rather than making it about the party's adventures, failures, and successes alike. The solution to this one is relatively simple. Take out your DM PC. Shorten the monologues. Shorten the description boxes. Reduce the amount of time you find yourself speaking. If you need a DM PC due to party size or whatever, just make sure that your party knows that the DM PC will not have the final say in any decision making. You may think you're good at not metagaming, but it is extremely difficult to not allow your DM knowledge to affect their decision making. It might also be beneficial to not craft some wickedly powerful NPC. Let your players be the stars. The show is really about them. The final DM is by far the biggest red flag of all of them to me. They are easily the most destructive of the bunch and can quickly cause those worst case scenarios I mentioned earlier. I simply call this DM the ego. This is the DM who takes things personally. When the players succeed at an encounter or act combative towards an NPC, the ego is the DM who bites back in a way that just doesn't make sense. They find a way to punish the players for breezing through an encounter which was supposed to be difficult or make their NPCs go to inappropriate lengths to attack the players. In a way, this DM is kind of a coalescence of all the previous DMs I've mentioned. They take all of the worst tendencies of those DMs and combine it into one very negative style of running a game. There isn't much advice I can give to keep someone from acting like this. This kind of behavior points to a much larger issue than just a misunderstanding of how to run the game. Now, I won't pretend to know what causes someone to react so negatively to their players, but I've seen it happen, and I've read the horror stories, so I know it isn't just made up. My advice on this part is not towards the DM, but to the players. And it is very, very simple. Get out. Stop playing in that campaign. If your DM is attacking you, insulting you, trying to get back at you for something you did in the session, 
you need to leave the campaign. The line between reality and fantasy is always a little bit blurred in D&D, so it's normal for things to get a little bit heated here and there, but the DM should always be able to be an objective figure. It is the DM's job to reel in the party when infighting happens, so if the DM is the aggressor, something is very, very wrong. Worst case scenario, that person is your friend, and the personal attacks can end up ruining your friendship. It can happen, even if it is rare. Your best option is to play it safe and let them know that you won't be able to play in that campaign anymore. D&D is important, but it's not worth ruining a friendship over a game that probably isn't super fun to play in anyway. So, that is my list of the five worst types of DMs. I hope you all enjoyed it, and even more so, I hope it can help you have a better D&D experience. Let me know in the comments anytime you've encountered one of these DMs and how that problem was resolved, if at all. I've got a super fun video in store for you all next week, so do keep an eye out for that when that comes out. But until then, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you around.